Welcome to part 5 of the Build a PC series. So the computer is now set up, all the drivers are installed, most of the programs I want to use are installed. Now I want to actually do something with the PC, like actually test running it in games, I want to test its performance, I want to see what its thermal performance is as it is now and also as it is with the fans in the bottom of the case turned off, see how that affects especially the GPU. First thing I need is a way to actually monitor the temperatures of the GPU and CPU and etc. So I have hardware monitor, which, as it says, allows me to monitor temperatures and, and it probably would display fan speeds as well, but I would like to be able to also control them at the same time. Now, I could control the fans by going into the BIOS, but I want to be able to control it live on the desktop while I'm doing things. So, for example, I want to put the computer under heavy load and then turn the bottom fans off completely. So I'm going to try MSI Command Center. I don't know if this will do what I want, but uh, hopefully. Yes, Command Prompt. Perfect. Okay, this program has a lot of control and a lot of good information, but it's also kind of super confusing. And also things do things before you even know what they're going to do. Like, I press this Fan Tune button, I thought, oh, it's going to open up a dialog box to do something or other. But no, it's like, auto-tuning your fans, please wait. And then it did that for a couple minutes. Is that permanent? Is it going to persist with its new fan settings across new boots? So Command Center doesn't seem to show the temperatures of the video card for some reason, as far as I can tell. So I open up Hardware Monitor for that, and that does show it, as well as temperatures for really pretty much everything. Did you know almost everything has a temperature sensor? I can see the temperature sensor reading of the SSD of the external hard drive. And I can see that the fans on the video card are actually at zero RPMs. So this video card will actually literally turn off the fans if the temperature is low enough. Okay, to simulate how my computer is going to behave thermally when under load, I'm going to render a Blender scene. So I don't know how to use Blender at all, but uh, there are Blender benchmarks freely available on the Blender website. This one's called Classroom. So it's just a preset scene and I just press the render animation button and it seems to be rendering, so... The CPU is getting fairly hot. It's at 77 centigrade, which is perfectly fine, but... It is certainly up there. It's up to the point where the fan speed, at least with the current profile, is at about 80%. I can definitely hear the computer. I mean, the computer is definitely not silent, but it's pretty quiet. These are all 16 threads, and that means eight actual physical cores are at literally 100%. Like, Blender is perfectly using every single thread as much as possible. So realistically, even when I'm doing something like recording and playing a game, it's almost certainly not going to be exactly 100% on all the cores. So this is a very extreme example when it comes to the CPU. Now, when it comes to the GPU, the GPU is sitting extremely cool and has the fan off, so I think Blender is not using the GPU to accelerate its rendering. Looks like I had to go into user preferences and set the video card as the compute device as well as setting it to GPU compute here. But now it's definitely using the GPU. How's it doing temperature-wise? The fan on the GPU is surprisingly still off. It is actually very slowly climbing in temperature. Vastly slower than the CPU. The CPU just shoots up and shoots down as soon as you put load on it or take it off. But the video card is barely climbing. Fans are off. Um, it is being used 100%, 100% utilization. I suspect the reason is probably these fans, it's almost as if they're on because remember we have those two fans at the bottom of the case that are on and blowing directly up into the video card. So it's kind of as if it has fans on it anyway, even with the video card's specific fans off. And we should be able to test this by turning off SysFan2. It's been maybe a minute. Video card's climbed to 48 centigrade. Obviously this isn't an extensive test. Just based on that, I would say it's probably increasing in temperature a little bit faster, but nothing dramatic. I was expecting as soon as you turn the fans off, this thing would shoot up in temperature. Okay, so I've learned something interesting about the temperature reported with Ryzen CPUs. I vaguely remember hearing about this, but it never actually mattered to me until now, now that I actually own one. So for some reason, the Ryzen 2700X that I have, and I think pretty much the whole 2000 line of Ryzen CPUs, actually reports a temperature offset different than the actual temperature of the CPU. So if you notice, in hardware info, it says the temperature of the CPU is 67 Celsius. The temperature reported here in MSI Command Center is 77 Celsius. It's exactly 10 degrees Celsius above what hardware info says. So which one's right? Hardware monitor. So it's actually 67. I'm not 100% clear on exactly why they have a temperature offset. 
sounds like it has something to do with fan consistency with other CPUs in the same socket. I guess probably they want to make sure Ryzen performs well in a way that fits with computers that already have fan profiles set up, so maybe having an offset helps with that in some way. I've also heard that it might have to do with making sure the CPU stays below about 60 degrees centigrade so that it has a better chance of boosting up to a higher frequency. Okay, I turned the fan off completely, which is make the temperature go up pretty fast. It looks like it's just, just starting to downclock. It's downclock each core by 25 megahertz. Oh, by 50 megahertz. Now that's reached about 76 centigrade actual temperature. If I talk about the temperature, I'll always mention the actual temperature. So about 75, it starts to downclock. It's really amazing just how fast the CPU loses its heat when you turn off Blender and go from 100% CPU utilization on all cores to just a couple percent. Literally within about 30 seconds, it's 50, 60, 70, it lost like 30 centigrade or so in about 30 seconds. So about one centigrade per second. It's incredibly fast. Okay, so I'm seeing absolutely fantastic results playing Wolfenstein A New Order. This is just the very beginning of the game. I've actually played quite a bit past this. I just started a new game for the purposes of not really spoiling anything. So the whole time, for a good five or ten minutes, I've been playing this game with OBS recording. Recording at 1440p, 60fps. And it's only been using around, uh, at most, like 13% CPU for the recording itself. And in total, with the, the system and OBS and the game and everything combined, my total CPU usage for the system never went over 50% while playing this game and recording it at 1440p 60fps. That is beautiful. I was very slightly concerned that I wouldn't be able to do 1440p, but I mean, it's an 8-core CPU. Like, I knew I would have a lot of headroom with this thing, and thankfully I have it. And since, unlike Blender, where every single core is pegged at 100%, this at most being 50%, it's kept very cool. The temperature has been below 60, more like low 50 centigrade or so. Oh, and the video card, by the way, the fans turned on. Uh, I'm gonna alt-tab out of the game, which is gonna pause it, so temperatures are gonna start to go down pretty quickly after this, but I'm gonna show you the video card temperatures. Um, so right now it's at 63 centigrade, which is pretty dang cool, and the fan is at 600 RPM, <laughs> which is like nothing. It's barely on. That's apparently 19% fan speed, it looks like. Hey, this is me from the future. I did some thermal testing with regards to the fan orientations in the case after I recorded this video, so I thought I would insert this here because this is the episode all about thermals. I did two tests. I tested the fans in their current orientation that you saw me install them in in the video. So we have the three exhaust fans, the one in the back and the two in the front, and then the two fans on the bottom are intake. And then I also tested flipping the front fans so that they are intake as well. So we have just the one exhaust in the back and then the two on the bottom and two in the front are intake. Because some comments suggested that it might be better that way and as I thought about it and how the air would probably flow in the case, I thought, yeah, it might actually be better if the fronts are intakes. So the test was a six minute render in Blender, focusing exclusively on the CPU so every single core was pegged at 100% use. The ambient temperature in the room is about 22.2 Celsius. And when I say about, I mean that's what I have my AC set to, so it's gonna you know, be a little bit below or a little bit above that. First test, these were the temperatures. Um, these are the most important ones here. The CPU is most important by far. The GPU was not being used, so I just wanted to see if anything drastic happened with that. And then these were also some other temperatures as reported by the motherboard. I'm not sure exactly what they correspond to, but this is what they were called in hardware monitor, system, mainboard, tempin, CPU? Why that CPU is different from the actual CPU, I don't know. Maybe this sensor is just near the CPU. And then temp in 6. So not entirely sure what these are, but nonetheless there's some more temperature numbers as reported by the motherboard itself. And then I flip the fans. And the end result is actually pretty surprising. I was expecting to see probably an improvement, or at least a significant change, but there really wasn't. The CPU ended up at the same temperature, GPU, same, the motherboard temperatures were all mostly the same, mainboard was two higher, and the CPU was one higher, but that's pretty insignificant, given that my room temperature is not tightly controlled whatsoever. So in summary, they look pretty much the same. I can say that what isn't reflected in this test data is that I do think that having the front fans as intake is actually 
better. I maybe could have shown this if I did a longer render in Blender, but when I did this test, the temperature on the CPU got up to 66 quite a bit before six minutes were up. Very, very soon after, probably within two or three minutes, I would say it got to about 66. Whereas with this one, it only got to 66 literally about 10 seconds before we were six minutes into the render. So I do believe it climbed to 66 a bit slower. Nonetheless, the temperatures are very similar. I'm just going to leave it as it is now with the two front fans being intake now that I've switched them around because I feel like it's probably a little bit better. All right, well, I think that's a good place to end. Uh, what is this, part five of the Build a Computer series? So the main thing I set out to do, test out the fans, see how my computer does with recording and playing games, and the answer to all of that is this computer's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's very quiet. The fans are not an issue at all. Barely uses the CPU recording 1440p 60 FPS, which is just absurd. Runs games beautifully. This computer kicks ass. It really does. I'm so happy with it. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this part. In part six, assuming I was right about this being part five, in part six, I think I'm gonna start going over how I'm re-evaluating my workflow and also just re-evaluating how I do things on my computer in general. I find that when I use a computer for a long time, I tend to get set in my ways. I figure out a way to do things and then I just keep doing it that way even if it's not the best and I should probably spend time learning a better way to do things. But I just keep doing the thing I'm familiar with because I'm familiar with it and, you know, I don't want to invest the time to change stuff or I'm scared of change or what have you. I think one of the best times to reevaluate just how you do stuff, like how you organize folders, how you edit in Premiere, how you record your workflow, etc., etc. I think a really good time to reevaluate that is a time like now, about every four years or so when I upgrade my computer and I do a fresh install of Windows. Fresh install. It's time to reevaluate everything. Let's see how I can improve how I do things. So that'll be in part six.